हेलो एवरीवन हाउ वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर ईशानी त्रिवेदी फ्रॉम एलजे इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजी वेलकम बैक टू दी सेशन ऑफ दी सब्जेक्ट रिगार्डिंग कंस्ट्रक्शन इक्विपमेंट एंड ऑटोमेशन नाउ स्टूडेंट्स वी नो दैट करेंटली वी आर डिस्कसिंग रिगार्डिंग दी रोबोटिक्स इन कंस्ट्रक्शन वर्क नॉट जस्ट रोबोटिक्स अलॉन्ग विद दैट वी आर ऑल्सो डिस्कसिंग अबाउट दी ऑटोमेशन एज वी हैव डिस्कस्ड ऑलरेडी दैट ऑटोमेशन एंड रोबोटिक्स बोथ ऑफ दैम टूगेदर गो हैंड इन हैंड वी सॉ दैट हाउ रोबोटिक्स हैज बीन अप्लाइड इन दी ब्रिक लेइंग मशीन इन दी ब्रिक लेइंग वर्क बिकॉज इट इज कंसिडर्ड टू बी वन ऑफ दी मोस्ट टाइम कंज्यूमिंग जॉब्स एंड इट इज ऑल्सो अ टाइप ऑफ द जॉब विच इज रिक्वायर्ड ऑलवेज इन ईच एंड एवरी टाइप ऑफ मेसिनरी कंस्ट्रक्शन वर्क विच वी कैरी आउट so we saw that how the robotics have been developed in the same along with an experiment and a case study and uh, how a prototype has been approved and it is available in the market now today we are going to talk about the next application of robotics is uh, the robotics in demolition we are going to actually talk about uh, two types of applications robotics in demolition and robotics in material handling we also discussed uh, in the very start that how uh, robotics have been applied in handling material uh, in different type of uh, transportation in laying of material in erection of the form work how it has become helpful nowadays so now first let us talk let us have an overview about the robotic application in the demolition so uh, i am going to show you certain uh, pictures over here that how a uh, demolition material looks like now first of all students i want you to uh, recall or say understand that what is demolition right now demolition meaning dismantling the structure right in simple terms if i want to still say then breaking the structure because its life is completed or its life is out of date so whenever you want to carry out a uh, demolition of any kind of structures right uh, let us say its design period is over its life is over or if you want to renovate it or if it has been damaged due to certain uh, issues or natural calamities and you want to refurbish it you want to rehabilitate it there are plenty of reasons uh, because of which demolition can be performed so it is breaking or dismantling of the structure so for that you know that two types of demolition can be carried out one is hand demolition and another is demolition by various construction equipment or say demolition by machines right so if you are dealing with a very high uh, say high quality or say tall structures or if you are dealing with uh, mass structures right then you can apply automation you can apply the robotics in this demolition equipment as well how this can be performed how does it work let us try to understand so demolitions occupy demolition robots actually occupy the 90% of the total market for construction robots so now we can conclude from this that out of all the robotics development uh, which is done uh, uh, in today's world 90% of robot have been developed for the demolition purpose only uh, they are one of the first commercially available market service uh, robots to be available in the market to tackle the application in historically labor intensive industry now you can uh, understand that again just like the brick laying work this is also a laborious work many laborers are required over here the safety gets endangered when we are talking about the demolition now you can also say that more than brick laying uh, process demolition process is even more tedious and time consuming so the first commercially available robots uh, for the construction activity in particular was the uh, demolition robots Uh, so automating demolition is all about safety and e efficiency both of which drive major cost savings right we discussed about this already that uh, because of this cost is reduced now ultimately cost is going to be reduced 
although the initial cost will be very much higher the installation the making of the robots right but then after the safety will be increased the cost will be reduced and efficiency will also be achieved over here we can see that uh, this is your automated or robotic drilling machine carried out carrying out the demolition work over here this is an example of a forklift as well you can lift the material simultaneously but always remember this is semi autonomous a controlling operator is always required to operate these type of equipment again we have over here this is also an example of a robotic machine used to break the structures break the uh, floors as well so demolition robots don't need breaks and can work day and night this is to be understood and it can complete the job even faster than before so while demolition robots have a high initial cost i already said this that it has a high initial cost but uh, in time being later on your overall cost is going to be reduced very much it is effective in long term delivering the roi in time this is the uh, return investment so once you have invested the return will be more as the time passes next we are going to talk about the robotics in material handling now what is material handling meaning it refers uh, to the transportation of material lifting of material conveying the material right belt conveyor belt conveyor is an example of an automated material handling equipment already right so we have plenty of equipment available already to carry out the handling process handling uh, means it includes many construction activities right as i discussed already that it has a uh, uh, its material laying handling carrying lifting transporting all these things are included so how can you apply robotics in material handling now also understand that material handling is quite a bigger market uh many uh, kind of uh, lifting equipment have been developed like cranes and hoist and winches we have already discussed about that so let us try to understand that how robotics can be applied over here and what is its benefit and what is the model uh, how the model is developed regarding material handling so material handling refers to the robotic arms moving the production parts typically on a conveyor belt or to hold a part in place of production now i already talked about the conveyor belt to put this in simple words if you want to understand meaning it has a robotic arm uh, which is right in front of you this is an uh, this is your robotic arm which is mounted on a conveyor belt so on this conveyor belt your robotic arm is going to move it is going to uh, pick up the material it is going to put the material on the other side wherever you want to require so this uh, picture itself explains what it tries to say over here both robotic material handling and machine tending systems are in high demand as they reliably deliver productivity gains in a wide range of application as i said this market is huge so its demand is more it is also used to load and unload a stationary production next mhr meaning material handling robot the name over here given is material handling robot mhr increases the efficiency and reduces the cost it can tow the objects i showed you the uh, forklift type of equipment the climb shell type of bucket so it can tow the objects as well uh, then behind them in trailers to which they can autonomously attach and then it can transport some mhr also use the forklift to lift the objects for storage Uh, i think i talked about all of these different categories already then we have is material handling robot is a mobile robot that follows markers or wires in the floor or uses vision or laser laser now this is your basic definition or basic concept it uses uh, the uh, vision or laser laser guided system uh, it can have sensors as well and it follows the path it follows the wire and the uh, continuously repeated cycle works is carried out it can also be laser guided vehicle i already said this and then it can be self guided vehicle as well if you put some intelligence into it then it becomes your self guided vehicle now this is one more example of a robotic arm now this is going to pick up the material it is going to swing and put it in the uh, on the other side so loading and unloading of materials can be done with the help of this same next uh, 
capacity right its capacity can range from few kg to hundreds of tons now i am going to talk about the various components of this material handling system that is mhr so what do we have uh, first we have is the mechanical parts right uh, it will be divided into three parts actually we are going to have the uh, mechanical parts we are going to have the microcontrollers and then we are going to have the software system three basic part comprises of the mhr so the first is mechanical parts the mechanical parts include the automobile parts only right so we have the chassis we have the steering system and we have the ultrasonic sensor for obstacle detection uh, about sensors i said it is going to be either laser guided or self guided in self guided sensors will be mounted so if it encounters any obstacle then it is going to stop at that point we have the chassis this is your basic uh, automobile equipment that is your mounting right so it can be either chassis it can be belt conveyor as well on which your robotic arm will be mounted and it is going to move with the help of this chassis so acts as a frame for attaching the other components it carries the load of other components and the payload see this is completely regarding the mechanical equipment which we you are familiar with the words as well now uh, it acts as a sacrificial component to prevent the damage of expensive payload in case of accidents right so in case of accident this chassis is going to protect your robotic arm next uh, we are going to talk about the electronic components right as i said the microcontrollers but not just the same we are going to have the sensors regulator ic's that is your engines right internal combustion engine uh, so the second component which we have is electronic components so electronic components includes the microcontroller which is the brain of the vehicle for the decision logic this is the brain of your robot that is microcontroller second is motor driver the third is your sensors and the last is the regulator ic that is your engine sensors are going to sense the path the position of loading and unloading stations and the third component which we have is software components so it comprises of three parts in mhr that is material handling robot the software component computers are used in making and implementing the program for the microcontroller that is the brain of the uh, mhr using embedded computer programming language now see students i have already told the, told you about this that uh, you are going to need to learn the coding the programming because the robots always work on the logic which is either zero or one so the uh, embedded languages meaning the uh, electronics engineer has to do this work to carry out the uh, software system and to handle it and to uh, feed the uh, programming and based on that it is going to work next we are going to talk about the third system third application of robotics in construction that is structural steel cutting now we know that uh, steel is an integral part of your uh, structures we know about the rcc that is reinforced cement concrete and we know about the steel structures now the steel structures the uh, joints the beams right uh, i think uh, you already know the importance of the steel members in the construction works now this structural steel right if we have channel section if we have t section if we have i section we you have already uh, studied about the same that different sections are used while designing the uh, construction Uh, structures you are going to consider about the various steel sections as well when you talk about the design part and analysis part of the structures so what we are concerned over here is that how you are going to apply automation in making these sections made up of steel so here we have the h beam we have the angle section we have the bulb plate we have the channel section that is c section we have the round bars we have square bars t bar and we have the flat bar now these are your steel sections which are available for construction but to make these sections right this is going to have specific dimensions it is have going to have specific shape so to make this we are going to have to cut the steel now cutting the steel welding the steel is a tedious process Uh, manually this work can be done equipment and tools can also be used but what if we apply robotics in structural steel cutting system that we are going to talk about in this particular application of the robotics right 
so we have the h beam we have the angle section i think the, we have uh, these in different forms over here this is the standard shapes of structural steel and these are the various shapes of the structural steel there is not much of a difference it is only difference of the shapes so uh, curved buildings and structures are getting popular and digital fabrication of structural steel has been successfully tried in several ways right because of the curved buildings because of the demand of these sections of uh, made up of steel uh, digital fabrication is becoming popular uh, ultimately this is your fabrication work as well if you consider uh, here you can see that uh, this can be cut with the help of high uh, laser guided systems but what if you apply automation what if you apply complete robotics and carry out the cutting system hence your labor work will be decreased your initial cost will be higher but the productivity will be increased safety of the workers will be ensured so cutting system consists of the robotic system and a handling system the main functions are translation orientation alignment and cutting right so these are the various processes involved in the robotic uh, steel cutting system uh, translation meaning the blueprint will be fed you are going to have to give the path you are going to design that what kind of section you want orientation will be then carried out and next will be your alignment that is the positioning and shaping and at last the cutting will be done we are going to discuss about the same as well let us try to understand uh, next we have is the most popular one is H beam or I beam with an H shaped cross section. So we are going to discuss about the same. The tool path generation system uses the DSTV file an industry standard for the shape of structural steel to generate robot job files. Meaning tool path generation right. So the tool the robotic tool which you are using it has to be given a path for cutting which I already said in translation and orientation so a tool path will be generated it will be decided with the help of a software that is DSTV file. Now this uh, standardization is uh, applied in the market in the digital fabrication systems as well. So this is how you are going to define a tool path and then based on that it is going to carry out the alignment and cutting process. So this is applied in the recent robots which are developed for the same so let us try to understand about the uh, various models regarding the same so for cutting the curved ends and irregular openings of the steel computer numerical control cnc machines with a cutting torch are typically used the cutting torch which i showed you in the previous slide that was your uh, system uh, so here the system is named as cnc computer numerical control over here we can see this is my robotic arm this will be your cutting equipment or the torch equipment this is my belt conveyor on which uh, your steel member your full steel member is available and based on the required dimensions this is going to give the cut and the sections will be produced uh, after one by one cutting of the steel bar or steel material a cnc machine moves a torch head in accordance with programmed cutting instruction so to this robotic equipment robotic arm the programming will be given that what path it has to follow at what distance it has to provide the cut and how much amount of cut has to be provided will be done with the help of programming system so oxy fuel laser and plasma torches see these are the different type of uh, torches or the laser torches which are used uh, laser guided system i said already then we have the plasma and oxy fuel torches they are common technologies used for cutting the steel beams as a digital design technology BIM is also developed now see this is building information modeling in which you are going to carry out the modeling the 3d digital modeling of your full structure it gives you an overview and idea that how it is going to work so you can combine these two and make a building information model with the same and uh, then you can execute the work again this is also an example a uh, model of uh, your steel cutting robot this chamber can be enclosed because when it is going to get cut it is uh, going to be a uh, say complex job so you can cover this with a cabin and this is how your uh, structural steel cutting robot appears 
Currently in the market, we have two types of robots ongoing. We have the Python X and we have the Crane Dong. Uh, these are the two manufacturing uh, steel cutting robots currently working in the market. You can uh, uh, check about the same in different references. Next, uh, I am going to talk about this particular model a little bit in depth. So, the cutting function is the most basic function of the system which cuts the steel beam into two parts along a contour or make holes in the steel. So, the path which is defined for the same that is your uh, let us say a contour line. The function is accomplished by cutting tool or torch. Uh, about the torch, we said that it can be laser, it can be oxy fuel, which is the end effector of the robot. The translation function can be achieved in two ways. The four functions which I talked about, out of which the third is the translation. The starting are the uh, orientation. So, moving the robot with a cutting tool and moving the structural steel. So, uh, the robot will uh, either you can move the robot or either you can move the steel on the belt conveyor. Either of the two things can be moved and translation process can be done. The geometry of the workpiece should be same with the geometry of the digital model. Meaning, the BIM, the building information model, the 3D model which you are going to develop in the, your CAD system, it has to match with the geometry of the real workpiece. Then and then only uh, your programming is going to prove correct, otherwise errors can occur. Uh, because the cutting tools move the program path, I said this, uh, this is just in technical terms, that the program path are fixed. So, it has to match with the digital model to avoid any discrepancies. Roller conveyor is used to move the structural steel. This is your roller conveyor. As I said, either the steel bar will be moving or either the robot will be moving. The orientation function makes the cutting tool to access the workpiece surface for cutting in the good posture without any collision. So, these are your internal functions of the robot and at last the cutting process will be done. We have translation, orientation, alignment and cutting at last. These are the four components of the processes on which your structural steel cutting by robot is done. I am showing you another model over here. This is the one which is available in the market uh, from the two manufacturers which I suggested. Uh, these two are your robotic arms over here. You can have as many robotic arms you want. Uh, this is our uh, steel bar and we have the conveyor. Uh, this is your uh, example or uh, say 3D model. This is your modeling uh, by which you can carry out the uh, design of your robot for steel cutting. Okay, students, so this covers your almost all the applications uh, regarding the uh, robotics in construction industry. Uh, we will meet in next session. Have a good day, students. Thank you.